Hi friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today is another fun fall video for you. I am so excited about these fall DIYs. This is one of my favorite seasons and it just always makes me excited to start on them. But before we get on with the video, I just want to welcome any of you who are new here. My name is Brenda. This is my sleepy Oliver, and we are really glad you stopped by today. And if you're returning, well, you know how much we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, DIY number one. So I'm going to take one of these 8x10 canvases from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this beautiful burnt orange paint and I'm going to paint the whole uh, canvas front and sides. Now I have got, I have seen these all over Facebook. It's called, I've seen them called exploding canvases or busted canvases. And I just thought they were so cool and I had to make one. So uh, if you've seen it before, I apologize, but it was new to me and I was really excited to make them. So I'm going to take some of this paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to trim it down to fit on the inside part of my canvas. I'm going to use my um, Mod Podge there and just brush it all along the inside part of my canvas. And I did do uh, a pretty heavy coat or thicker coat because the canvas does soak it in. Then I laid my paper just like you see it with the the right side of the print facing up and then once I had it all smushed into that Mod Podge I just went around it again and added some more and then I went around the front I had marked um, where I needed it and I'm just going to place it or brush it on the Mod Podge that is all around where I am going to need it. Then I took this napkin. I believe this came from Hobby Lobby. I removed the two plies that were behind it and I laid it down just like it is, just like you see me doing. Then I'm just gonna go over it again with some more Mod Podge to help protect it from any ripping and all that stuff. After that, I took, now you want a sharp exacto knife or knife or box cutter i've seen people use scissors but i am just um cutting i first cut down the middle and then i'm cutting uh, down the sides here then i'm going to cut um, at diagonals so you'll just see what i'm doing right here just going to cut each section diagonally there and uh this was pretty easy to do um i, I had to change out my blade for my exacto knife because it was uh, kind of dull and luckily I had one to change it out with because uh, that was a lifesaver. Then I'm going to, I turned it around and I'm going to start rolling those pieces and gluing them in place just like you see me doing right there. And you guys, that burnt orange color by Americana, the Deco Art Americana burnt orange. Oh my gosh, I am loving this color. <laughs> so after I had it all done, I'm going to use my hot glue and um, I don't know why I didn't use my tight bond glue. It, I don't know, but I am going to glue it to where my napkin is. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that I put the napkin on a thin canvas from Dollar Tree, eight by 10, but you could use cardboard. It doesn't have to be the canvas. You just need a backing to put it on. So I glued the top canvas to the bottom canvas. Then I decided to go ahead and start filling the bottom corner with some sunflowers since there's some flowers in that napkin. I'm going to take some of this ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby and then the brown ribbon, I don't know what you call it, mesh ribbon or whatever from Dollar Tree. And then this is some ribbon I had in my stash from Do uh, Hobby Lobby as well. And I'm just doing the awareness ribbon and scrunching them up in the middle. I'm going to use some twine to go around them and tie them all together. <clears throat> and then once I have them all tight, I'm going to trim off or I'm going to cut off that tail of the orange ribbon. And then I'm going to dovetail the ends and you just fold in half and cut at an angle to dovetail just gives it a nice finished look then I'm just going to use my hot glue and I'm going to glue it right into the left hand top corner and then I'm going to add a little sunflower well then I decided there that wasn't enough so I filled in the whole bottom of this canvas with sunflowers and then I'm going to glue some in uh where the napkin is and that's I just you know this is supposed to be exploding and I thought how fun would it to make it look like it's exploding with 
some flowers. So I took four tumbling tower blocks, glued them in to end, painted them with that burnt orange, and then used my tight bond quick and thick multi-purpose glue and hot glue to make a stand. And there it is. I love how this came out. I think it is so beautiful. I can't wait to do this exploding canvas for some Christmas DIYs. I think it's going to be so much fun. It's so amazing. You have to let me know if you've seen these as well. Hi guys, I just wanted to stop in real quick and just thank you all so very much. You guys mean the world to me. You know, with fall DIYs, we see a lot of DIYs that say thankful, grateful, blessed, all of that. But I just want to let you know that I'm thankful, grateful, and blessed for all of you who watch my videos, show up every week, comment, all of that fun stuff. Without you guys, there would not be me in this YouTube world. And I appreciate you so very much. And if you're new and you enjoy home decor on a budget and you enjoy today's video, make sure you hit that red, red subscribe button before you go. Become part of our YouTube family. And then let me know in the comments box that you're new here. I'd love to get to know you. So with all of that being said, let's continue on with the video. Okay, DIY number two. So I had this embroidery hoop. This is a second piece of it. I got this at a yard sale, but you could use any embroidery hoop. You could even use those MDF hoops from Dollar Tree. Um, but I'm going to paint it with that burnt orange. Once it was painted, I took some chicken wire. I got this from Amazon and I cut it down to size. I'm going to use my stapler to just put a couple staples in it on the bottom. And then I'm just going to work at uh, pulling it kind of tight and then I'm just going to wrap the ends around the embroidery hoop just like you see me doing there now and when you work with this stuff you do want to be careful because the ends can be sharp I have poked myself in the past and <laughs> had to wear band-aids um, luckily I didn't do that this time but once I had it all wrapped I did go around and any that was extra long I just used my little uh, pliers here to wire cutters I should say to cut the the wires and then I decided I wanted to cover that um, wire that was over the edge and I'm just taking this trimming this Kathy Jo sent me I don't know where she got it but I thought it was really pretty and it was perfect for this so I'm just going to add some hot glue and press that trim right into the hot glue and I do that all the way around the outside and after I have it all done on the outside, I decide to go ahead and do it on the inside of my loop as well, just to kind of cover up the chicken wire that's around the, the hoop. You probably don't have to do this if you don't mind seeing it. Most of it's going to be covered with florals anyway, or anyways, but I just decide to go ahead and do it. So then I took a piece of floral foam. I'm going to glue it onto the little ledge that was there. And then I'm going to take my, uh, what is that, zip tie, and I'm just going to put it around the floral foam just and connect it to the, the um, chicken wire. But when you do that with floral foam, you don't want to pull it too tight because it does start pulling into that foam. If you pull it too tight, then it will cut right through it. So I've just kind of brought it till it was just barely tight. Then I took some sunflowers from Dollar Tree, some hydrangeas from Dollar Tree. I just had a big handful of fall florals that I got out of my fall floral tote, and I just started filling this up. I am not a florist. I don't, I had never took school on how to uh, put floral arrangements together. I'm just going with what I think I like and with the colors. I wanted all these colors together. I thought they were beautiful. So I'm just going to add them all in here and there. Some of these came from Dollar Tree. Some of them, most of them Dollar Tree, some of them Walmart. But I took some of this pompous grass that I got last year from uh, Dollar Tree. I bought so much of this stuff and then I hardly used it, but I think it's so cool looking. I love it. <laughs> Anyways, I like to add it to some of my stuff and I'm just going to add it all in here. Um, I'm going to add some of that. I don't know what that stuff is called, the long hanging beaded looking stuff. Um, I didn't even look at the tag to see what it's called, but some of this stuff here, I'm going to add a couple of those on each side. And then I had some foxtails that I'm going to add into it as well. And I just, like I said, I just kept filling it until I was happy with the way it looked. And there's the foxtails there. They're so pretty. And those came from Dollar Tree, you guys. They're, they're beautiful. So I took one of these faux leather 
words from Hobby Lobby and I had a little bit of wire. There was some wire that was wrapped around my chicken wire when I opened it up. And so I thought oh, this would be perfect to keep and use. So I just cut a little bit off of that and then I'm just using it to connect that word to my chicken wire and there it is. I love how this came out. I thought about doing something on the top to make it look like a peduncle of a pumpkin, but I decided, you know what, I just really love the simplicity of this and I hope you love it too. You have to let me know what you think in the comment box below. Okay, it's a time for a celebration of your recreations. Kathy has been busy making all kinds of decor, especially for Christmas. I love them, Kathy. They're beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Now, DIY number three. So for this DIY, I'm going to take this garland, this wood piece garland that I got at 90% off last year um, after fall or it was I don't, I don't remember when it was but it was 90% off so I got this for like what was it 90 cents 60 cents 70 cents something like that I couldn't believe it. I was so excited so I took them apart I removed the uh, staples I painted everything with those colors I also took these fall there are these letters from Hobby Lobby painted them with um, cash no cashew <laughs> from Waverly. And then I'm just going to trace them out on the back side of some more paper from Hobby Lobby. And then once I had them all traced out on this paper, I was able to fit the L's down below. Then I just cut them all out. I love this paper too. I think it's so pretty. And I'm going to add my Mod Podge onto each front, the front of each of those letters. And then I let it dry. And once they were dry, I'm going to take my, I put them the paper on the letter, added my parchment paper, and using my heat press going over it, the parchment paper protects the paper and the heat press reactivates the Mod Podge so that way your paper sticks. And I love this way because there really is no wrinkles involved and it just looks perfect. So after I had the paper on all of those letters, then I'm going to take um, some more Mod Podge and I'm going to put it on top to protect that paper and then I let it dry. After it was all dry, I'm going to take my little finger sander. I guess I'm going to show you. I'm still putting Mod Podge on. <laughs> I didn't realize I showed you so much. Anyways, um, when you do the Mod Podge on top of the paper, you try not to do too much because it can cause your paper to bubble, which you can reuse your heat press, but sometimes the parchment paper will stick to that Mod Podge, so just be careful. So I took my finger sander and a little file to get all the excess paper off, as you saw there. Now I laid them in place of how I want them, and I am going to use my pin to trace out where they're attached so that I know where to put my glue. After that, I'm going to use my wood glue. I'm going to put my wood glue all over inside that area that I marked, and then I'm going to add a little hot glue. The wood glue, again, is for permanent hold, and the hot glue is for immediate hold. So once I have the, those two attached, then I'm going to do the same thing and continue attaching it to each one of those pieces. Now, yes, these are not laying straight. I didn't want them to lay straight. I wanted this to all be a little crooked because it's a little more whimsical. Um, you could, if you didn't like that, you could, you know, poke holes in them and do hangers, you know, hang them one below the other. Um, but I decided to do it this way for something a little different. Then again, I used my wood glue and hot glue to attach my letters on each one of those shapes. And then um, I was going to put a little bow on the top and I forgot to do that and I never did. But you could do that if you wanted. You could add flowers here and there if you wanted. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could do to this to make it your own. Um, you could even you know, paint shadows onto your pumpkins and acorns and stuff if you want to do that. Um, I just decided to leave mine blank. My granddaughter's sitting there helping me. I could not get that screw in my, uh, in the little hook at, for anything. She's trying to help me, but yeah, her fingers were still in the way, but we finally got it taken care of. I got my hanger uh, screwed in that wood is so soft that you just can screw it right in and then that's all there is look how cute that is I love this you have to let me know what you think about this one as well in the comment box below
Okay, DIY number four. So for this DIY, I'm going to take this acorn and squirrel that came from um, Woodpecker Crafts. They sent that to me last year. And then that little piece of wood was just some scrap wood that was in my stash. I'm going to use Waverly chalk paints in the color hazelnut, truffle, and then that beautiful burnt orange to paint them. Then I took this stencil. This came, I bought it this, this last year, I believe, from... Dollar Tree. These are the sticky ones, but I have to tell you, you know, I do chalk couture. These are no comparison to chalk couture. They're very barely sticky. The the vinyl or whatever they use is very thin, and a lot of the smaller pieces were like sticking up and not really wanting to lay down from when I used it once last year. So I might be able to get one or two more uses out of this, but I don't know how many more uses I'm going to get out of this. But anyways, I love the little patterns. And so I decided to go ahead and take my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew. And then I'm just going to stencil these little p uh, patterns onto the bottom part of my acorn. And then after that was all done, I just used a baby wipe to wipe that off. And then I took that cashew and I'm just gonna paint in for the eye. And then I'm gonna take a little black Sharpie to make a little pupil inside of it. And to be honest, I tried to make some stripes and stuff, but it just didn't look good on the, the squirrel. So I just kept it that normal color or that burnt orange color. I also took one of these give thanks words from Dollar Tree, I painted it with the truffle, and I'm just making stitch marks with a small paintbrush all along it. And then I'm gonna use my Tight Bond Quick and Thick Multi-Purpose Glue and my hot glue. And I'm gonna glue that acorn down. The acorn's a little thicker um, than like normal wood from Dollar Tree. Uh, so there was, I felt like there was enough room to glue it. Um, you could always you know, if you had something smaller, use tumbling tower blocks. Yeah, if you don't want to use Woodpecker Crafts, by the way, I am a, an affiliate, so I do have a link to them. So if you do order through Woodpecker's Craft and order through that link, it does give me a little something from Woodpecker's Craft. So I'd appreciate it. But if you don't want to use it, you could get any kind of small uh, acorn shape from Dollar Tree. And I think they have some small squirrels. You could use theirs too. So then after I glue all of these pieces onto that little wood piece, I'm going to take some of these. I think these came from Hobby Lobby, these little acorns. I'm just going to glue some in place because, you know, there's a squirrel with his little acorns and he's giving thanks for all of his little acorns. <laughs> you like my little story I got going on there? Anyways, this is all I did to it. It was, oh no, I didn't. I forgot. I added some of my little braided ribbon here, the jute ribbon that I get from Amazon that I absolutely love. I just put it along where the two colors meet on the acorn and I'm just going to glue it. And then I just made a little uh, shoestring bow with my jute twine and then I'm just going to put that up the stem of the acorn. And then that's all I did with this. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I found that squirrel and I forgot I had it. And I'm like, this is so cute. I really got to use it. So um, so that's why I decided, okay, well, I, I want to put it with an acorn. And this is what I came up with. But anyways, you have to let me know what you think about this one as well. It's not what I had pictured in my mind. So I think it's cute, but it's not what I had pictured. But anyways, the final reveal is coming right up. So there they are. I just love these, especially that busted canvas. Oh, I, I can't wait to make more of those. You have to let me know which one was your favorite today. If you've seen the busted canvas before or not, I'd love to find out how many people have seen this. Um, and then I will be back again on, I'm going to try for Thursday, you guys. My life is really hectic right now. Hopefully the kids will be in school soon and I can get back to a better schedule. But until then, make sure you give me that thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.